So welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm Callie Waterhouse with the Arizona Association of Realtors, and we are thrilled today to bring you managing and serving the millennial agent in your office. Today's featured presenter is Nobu Hada, and Nobu is the Director of Digital Engagement for the National Association of Realtors for NAR. He's a former realtor, a geek, a former Alaskan, a Minnesotan, now calls Chicago home. And we are thrilled to welcome Nobu Hada. And I'm sure that if you have been with us in the past or you attended the spring convention, that you are familiar with Nobu and all of the um, fabulous brainage that he brings to us. So with all of that being said, welcome Nobu. All um, right. Hey. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. We are thrilled that you are here all the way from Chicago and uh, this very, very special day for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a baby. Well, actually, I'm not having my, my wife is having a baby, and uh, <laughs> hopefully she holds on to him a, a little longer while I'm getting this uh, this webinar uh, out of the way for you guys. But that's, it's a subject that it's, it's really kind of near and dear to my heart as um, I was going through my real estate sales career as an agent. I was kind of constantly the youngest uh, person in all the offices I went to, which is starting to change a little bit. Um, and that's uh, something that I want to share with you guys today. Um, it, it, one of the things I really kind of want to relate to you before we even start is the idea about what young is. I, I know that word is, is very polarizing in this industry, um, but get over it. I, everything is getting younger now. The world is getting younger. And, and if it's not younger in age, it's younger in mindset, which is something that uh, folks should really kind of consider when it comes to real estate. Um, at the, at the end of the day, are people going to use your agents or use you as a brokerage because you're X age or Y age? No. They're going to do it because they trust you and that you're giving them um, information that they need, which is in, 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 that, in that light, thinking young when it comes to marketing, when it comes to everything online versus offline, and really kind of changing the perceptions of of people uh, before they even met you. And if even if you don't leave this 45 minutes to an hour that we're going to have together uh, with, hey, I'm going to go out there and, and, and attract younger agents, it's kind of rethinking your brand, rethinking your message, and rethinking about uh, the little things when it comes to real estate for long-term success, which is going to be key going forward. So while we'll be talking about millennials, we'll be talking about young people, um, I want you to kind of think about what it is that you're going to do to attract really kind of connected clients of all age, thinking young and 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 and, and going beyond legacy issues that um, that we have exp been experiencing in this business. So, um, as luck would have it, in the last week, um, due to the influx of new agents at the at the state and local level. Um, and our membership has gotten younger. The median age has got has dropped to 53, which is the youngest than I think it was in 2006 when uh, it got it was at 52. Um, there are new, no question about it. There are new agents coming into this business. There are um, new brokerage models coming into this business. When it comes to getting younger, a lot of folks are seeing this as kind of a relief. Uh, this is Teak uh, uh, Wigan, who's a youngish writer working for Inman. But I'll say, I'll say this, it, it, this industry is attracting folks of all ages. Maybe it's due to the economy, maybe it's due to, um, due to uh, uh, the potential op entrepreneurship opportunities that real estate has to offer, but um, it's attracting business uh, like it was last time that the market was good. Now, as a broker, things get interesting. Uh, should you be taking uh, a millennial agent because they're millennial and they're young. Will it make you younger in the eyes of some of your consumers? No, I, I, I don't want you to have that knee-jerk reaction. But when it comes to these agents, think about how savvy they are. Think about how they can fit into your business model. Think about how they can expand the horizons that your brokerage uh, might want to lead to in the next couple of years. Think about that as, uh, as we go along. Because at the end of the day, what I want you to think about more than anything is the fact that real estate itself doesn't have a millennial problem. Real estate sales does. Uh, as a former agent and now kind of the guy that kind of goes around and makes relationships with brokers and portals and, and technology companies, I'm going to tell you there's a lot of people in, in real estate who are young, in their 20s, just out of college, but they're doing things in real estate that um, 10, 15 years ago we never would have 
considered them being in this business. They're project managers. They're engineers for um, app companies and, and web design companies. They're marketing folks. They're chief technology officers when it comes to real estate. So what I want you to think about is changing your message more than anything. If there's one thing that you t you do from this hour is to really kind of change your message when it comes to real estate. Um, real estate sales, that word sales is a problem nowadays. You have to think about it in, in the context of, of what, what connected individuals think about what their goals are. These guys and gals, in general, whether they're 20 or 100 years old, know they want to buy or sell their home. And I think the broad problem that we have as, a, in the, as an industry is that they view as, be, as people, us, being in the way. So think about that when it comes to um, th this millennial quote unquote problem that we have. Um, frankly, I don't think we have a millennial problem. I think we have an inclusiveness problem when it comes to people who are, you know, think outside the box, who might think differently of this business. Um, so if you're a little more inclusive to a new way of thinking, if you're inclusive to, to how a, a, a young-ish broker or agent challenges you, that's probably a good thing. Um, there's one thing that we do is really kind of take, take away this. We're no longer in a sales business. We don't need, people don't need us to sell homes. Uh, they need us to help their emotional issues when it comes to selling home. They need us to uh, deal with the paper. They need to do with all the things that aren't on Google readily. And when you think about what, what, uh, what sales, uh, real estate sales is, is now it's really kind of an entrepreneur. Uh, what, what really kind of drove me in, in real estate in general when I first got out was the fact that you can do whatever you want to do in this business to attract, um, to attract your clientele, which is something that a lot of young entrepreneurs love about real estate. Uh, case in point, Dan Olick today mentioned and interviewed a youngish DC broker who at 24, right out of college, decided to get into business after buying a home in the Washington DC area and now works uh, for a local brokerage there. And when you think about what he says about real estate, it's something that I had been considering for a long time, like the entrepreneurial aspect of it. Lead with that when it comes to any kind of your uh, 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 recruit attraction and, and engagement when it comes to potential recruits. Um, my wife, a youngish agent as well, it saw the entrepreneurial aspect of this business right away and it's helped her thrive in this industry after only being in Chicago for only a couple of years. Think entrepreneurship. This is something that at the end of the day, this is what real estate is all about. These people can do literally anything within reason to attract business and to attract success within it. It's all here, folks. And, and by the way, if you want to see how um, millennials are uh, influenced by each other, check out this reality check by Dan Olick that was published today and read the comments about what people think about uh, real estate, uh, realtors in general when it comes to um, what they do. We've got a long way to go to really attract folks into this business and feel that they, that they want to use this rather than feeling like they need to um, or they have to, something that we need to change right away. So rethink your message when it comes to almost anything. Now, uh, Callie, if you want to go ahead and put out that first poll question, um, I, you know, I, when it comes to a lot of, uh, oops, there you go. If you're seeing any influx of new agents, go ahead and say so here. Um, I would, I would love to see if they're younger. Um, if, if not, say so in the comment section. Um, I really want to kind of take away what it is that, that uh, these attendees, you attendees are seeing in, in your markets right now when it comes to your brokerages. Um, if they're younger, mention it in the chat box. They'll be able to see something like that there. We have that chat box um, going. And mention it if they do. Kelly, we can just kind of come back to it too. We just light, light the, uh, the, uh, the uh, presentation back up. Okay, so I'm going to close the chat the poll now. There you go. All right. If you're seeing them, that's great. If not, let's move on to things beyond age. Because what I want you to, to, to do is not put people in demographic box. I, I, there's one thing that has been kind of concrete when I actually talk to young people in this business is not one of them consider themselves a millennial or calls themselves a millennial. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you're seeing more and more of these folks as, as millennials have gotten older become uh, uh, more uh, uh, abreast of their buying power within many industries. But um, 
at the end of the day, there are only really two types of, of agents right now. It's the busy agents and the really bored ones. And I don't care how old or young the, your agents are in this business, whether you're recruiting them or, or, you're, uh, or you're attracting them, you've got to get them busy as, as quickly as humanly possible. There's too much sitting on our hands right now, uh, hiding behind a computer, which is what millennials uh, tend to do. Um, let's start challenging these folks, no, no matter how connected or unconnected they are, to, to, to think differently and to think younger in their business, which is the first challenge when it comes to um, uh, attracting folks of their like. So when we talk about this, before we can get these folks in the fold, um, think about attraction and retainment with your clients um, as a way to really infuse that in your recruiting process. Um, most brokers and, re and realtors at this point are, uh, are really kind of um, leveraging their, uh, their, their referral base, they're um, not really going out and buying more business. If you're attracting if you, and you're retaining your clientele, use that same mindset when it comes to next generation agents, no matter how old or young they are. I, I look at things like this. This is BerlingameProperties.com. There is no real estate search in this website. It is, it is quote unquote, client-focused real estate meant to attract people who look like these folks in the Berlin game market, which is right outside the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and, and for those of you guys who have seen this, the, this slide deck before, I mean, this is the epitome of attraction marketing. It's, I feel like I know Melissa and John McGuire. I feel like, uh, you know, these folks who I might, might be working with at the, at the Silicon Valley companies where I'm at is, a, um, is something that attracts me to this business model. And I, and I look at this type of marketing as a way to attract agents because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of agents will not know how to do things like this and they're going to rely on folks and brokers like you to get this stuff done. This is the epitome of fantastic marketing right now when it comes to attraction mindset, when it comes to retaining the clients that are out there. I, I, I look at, 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 at beyond the closing, what Raziel is able to do with his previous clients. Um, he had a previous client take his website and translate the whole thing into Chinese for free. This is an amazing thing when you think about it. And if you have 5, 10, 20, 100 agents that know how to attract their clientele just like this and they use them after the fact, this is a sustainable business. This is a future-proof business no matter where the market goes that exudes, that exudes premium service. And at the end of the day, these are the things that attract not only clientele, but attract the agents who are like-minded when it comes to this. Consider using or doing something like this into your business. We're going to talk about more of this uh, in a moment. So where do you start? Have a standard. Curate a culture and be a mentor. Uh, these are all words that are almost cliche outside of real estate, but in this business, we are having a heck of a time with all three of these things. Now, uh, what does a standard look like? You know, I, I look at things like this. This is, these were on, these signs were on the doors of about $5 million worth of real estate in the block that I live in. Um, Deluxe was spelled wrong. Rita, the word itself of the, um, the, of the street that the open house was set at was misspelled. These are the things that, uh, at the end of the day, don't attract clients and sure as heck won't attract any of, the, um, any of the agents or potential brokers that will go into your fold. Quality control, first and foremost, is something that you should think about when it comes to attracting agents. Have a stance on something and be different. Do something that makes you stand out when it comes to your buyers, your sellers, and the agents that they're going to be working with. Now, could it be philanthropic? Yes. Some of you guys have seen what my, my, what my wife does. Um, my wife gives back to her community. There are whole brokerages now that are, uh, that, are, that are really kind of invigorating social good when it comes to um, their agents and really kind of getting it out there to attract the clients of the future, of the present and the future for them. Um, she's, she's busy. She doesn't spend a lot of time on, on marketing, which right now, People shouldn't be sitting on Facebook all day trying to find a clientele. They should be out there hustling and getting folks from the online world into the offline real world where business is sold. Uh, buddies of mine like Dave Oswald, he goes and uses his website as a, um, 
as a as a as a as a focus point for social good within his community. This is something that right now will will stand out with a lot of these millennial type agents who think about, hey, how can entrepreneurship and giving back matter to my clients and matter to my community and to attract these folks who are going to use me to buy and sell their home, or I should say go and, and, and rent a home through me. Think about things like this. Now, can it go higher? Can it, can it go beyond what an agent can do? Yes. Uh, this is HawaiiLife.com. Hawaii Life is a small uh, startup uh, 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 brokerage who, inside 10 years, uh, grew in stature from a small shop to having their own TV show and HGTV. If you're an agent for Hawaii Life, you have to, every week, write about the market. You have to exude your market expertise on the website that, uh, that, that, that is the main focal point for online marketing and offline sales. Uh, there are agents here who make uh, uh, easily six, seven, eight figures when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to Hawaii sales and every week exude this type of market expertise on their website. You have to do it as an agent and they are beating away other agents uh, with a stick because at the end of the day, this enhances not only the agent brand but the, but the uh, the company's brand as well. These guys are all in it together. Now, could you keep going? Yes. The guys at Boutique Real Estate Group, they do one thing when it comes to their marketing. You must, as an agent through the Boutique Real Estate Group, use utilize video within your marketing strategy. This is the company's marketing strategy along with the agent's marketing strategy. It trickles all the way down. These guys pay for this marketing that has to be shared, that has to be sold, and you have to think objectively as a marketer about how you're going to take your next listing and make it shine online. This is culture, guys. And with these two groups, uh, these, these, these medium and, and large size independents, um, they have carved out a niche within their own markets to stand out, and they are starting to attract not only the agents of the future, but the clients of today and the future as well. Now, could you keep going? Yes. My former bro uh, uh, brokerage house, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, has a rethink council where they have, at the enterprise level, with all 40 some, some odd um, uh, uh, brokerages, has gathered all of their young and young at heart agents who like to, like to really kind of push the boundaries when it comes to what is real estate, and they've organized it. It's called the Rethink Council. They're on Facebook. Their main communications route is Facebook, which is it's, 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 it's a pretty cool thing to see. But even, even a large entity can go out there and start thinking about what the future of their brand looks like. And it's going to be the agents that they already have, that they're up and coming, that they're young and young at heart. And not all these agents that are part of this Rethink Council are in their 20s. There's some in their 30s and their 40s and even their 50s who want to be kind of uh, what is next in real estate and start to define what that is when it comes to um, when it comes to what marketing is for their agency, and this, to, to, for as an enterprise, uh, old school company, to be able to put a, pic, their, a, a face and a name to the future of real estate, is a fantastic thing. So at the end of the day, you know, this is a very people-driven industry, and millennials, and, and again, you know, I don't want to, uh, don't really want to, um, to, uh, to generalize, but um, digital natives is something that we've been hearing more and more, and, 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 and this is not a very good fit when it comes to this business. So sometimes you have to train these people and prove to these folks, these young agents, young at heart agents, that you have to get out from behind your computer and go and talk to people in the real world. So in the context of, of attracting and retaining agents, being a guide through the real estate journey is something that every um, broker managers should consider doing. Uh, a real estate journey is exactly that. Agent year one or two is going to be just trying to get their bearings, get things done. And by year five, year six, they, they should be at the point where they are um, they're, they're, they're referral based and they're out there and using um, new business techniques to, to bring in um, uh, new business in general to grow it. Um, Everybody, whether they're a millennial or not a millennial, needs to be treated as if they're a unique individual when it comes to sales. And it, it really does take um, a, a custom experience from the broker manager position to make sure that these folks are getting it done. For millennials, 
I would encourage you, all of them, and this is something that, that, that I'm seeing more and more of, stop hiding behind your computer, stop hiding behind Facebook ads, stop hiding behind all these things that you think are building business, and get out in the real world and start seeing homes in the real world and making relationships there. Um, there are things that cannot be learned, things like empathy when it comes to uh, a, a, a buyer and a seller and the motions that they go through. Um, there are things like 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 dealing with the emotions of the buy and sell that can only happen in the real world, and, and then dealing with relationships with older school agents that you're going to have to deal with um, as a, a newish or millennial a, a broker or agent. Now, I look at what they're dealing with now and see, man, you know what? This is going to shape the way they think about this business, right? The gig economy when it comes to Airbnb, when it comes to Uber, um, the one-stop shopness um, of, of Amazon, being able to go and, 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 and really kind of talk to strangers through Angie's List and Craigslist, exuding premium service like Apple Computer. And, and I look and see things like, um, one of the things that strikes me is, as, as a marked change between where I got into this business as a millennial 15 years ago and now is that far less of these newish agents are hung up by portals and hung up by things that got most of this going back in 1995 when literally these kids were kids. Um, let's get beyond that stuff and learn from these guys and think about it. I look at Reddit, right? Reddit makes it so that um, the hierarchy is flat. The, um, another thing that I learn, uh, that I see more and more of is the, the collaboration levels are pretty high. They have no problems going out and talking to people that they haven't met, um, uh, meeting in the real world folks that they've met on Facebook, for example, and putting that in their into their um, into their business. Uh, top down mentalities for most people, not only millennials, frankly, do not work. And most people at this point, especially in real estate, don't like to be told what to do. They need to be guided. They need to be shown. They need to be really kind of uh, approved to that, that things work and things don't work. And they need to be challenged. And if you're a, a, a peer instead of a manager to these folks, um, you will succeed. So think about that when it comes to attracting and retaining your, your next generation clients. I look at things like this. The, the, you know, the amount of, of crazy... Facebook questions that get asked online right now is downright scary. And this is somebody that had really kind of went out there and laid out their whole client base online. We really need to go and tell these agents, like, hey, you know what? You've just kind of destroyed your fiduciary uh, duty. Fiduciary is a legacy term. Let me tell you what it means. You just cannot go out there and do what you just did. Like this agent, an actual millennial, pointed out. Aaron Dickinson is actually a young guy, and he pointed out to this agent that, hey, you know what? You've just shown your hand to 30,000 agents, who, who most, some of them who are in your market. Probably need to rethink about that. Are you a better broker or manager than Facebook is? We're going to talk about this in a second, but be better than a Facebook post. I look at things like this. They're going to they're going to want to use technology to annoy people because technology is something that they're they they're used to using that they're used to making these cold calls. They're going to get used to doing things because technology really kind of hides really kind of true work. Um, this is as this is the result of a auto calling technology that that agents are using nowadays that needs to stop. Annoying clientele is not a way to attract any of those folks into the fold. Okay, so think about that as you go. So at the end of the day, this is what we need to do. For these folks who have no idea what professionalism and empathy and collaboration means, let's start defining what that means and what that means in your brokerage environment. What does professionalism mean to you, as an as a as a broker owner? How does that convey down to the people who've never met? me as an agent, how, would I, how do I show off that I am more professional than the other guy? What does empathy mean? What does collaboration mean in your term? Um, think about as an office what it is that makes the consumer's job easier, which will in turn make your agent's job easier as well. And don't forget to challenge them. Do you have a plan when it comes to helping people buy and sell? their homes. You need to think about this. And if they don't have a plan because all they see is what Google tells them, all they see was it is what HGTV tells them, um, that's your competition. Rethink what 
this stuff means to an agent who have, may not even have bought a home before, especially when it comes to millennials. If they're young, they they're most likely have not bought a home yet due to market uh, conditions. But think about this as you go. Do you have a plan? And if they don't have a plan, and, if, and they don't want to be challenged, you should probably think about telling them no or say, come back to me when you're ready to be challenged uh, when, it comes to, um, uh, when it comes to your business. Because at the end of the day, we need more business owners and business people in this business, not salespeople. Sales, sales is easy at the end of the day. Curate leads, and this is something that when you have them in the fold that you're going to have to do. Uh, and, and actually, I would, say, I would encourage this beyond uh, a, a millennial agent. Your agents right now are out there just trying to keep their deals together, and the last thing they want to do is curate any of the leads that they that they they have um, and may not be ready to buy or sell right now. Or maybe they're renting initially. Be the source of the source of next generation information. What pains me when I see agents that, that will go out and spend oodles and gobs of money to travel the other side of the country to listen to people who have never bought real estate tell these folks how to sell real estate. Where is the manager? Where is the broker when it comes to that? What if you become, as, an, as, a, as a broker or a, a, a broker owner, you become that source of that source? You become that, that, that thought leader within real estate. Uh, I know you have a couple of there. I've met, a, I've met them. They're all working for, for portals and, and technology companies now. It can happen in Arizona. Please let that, let that, let, 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 let that roll. And I look at this. Hawaii Life has a uh, huge lead generation pipeline for their agents. Um, the Boutique Real Estate Group. When you Google right now Boutique Real Estate, these guys show up. They have, they have turned around and started owning things and terms like Boutique Real Estate. It's an amazing thing. And these guys as well. Um, they spend oodles and gobs of money when it comes to lead generation to curate the leads that they've got, throw them back on a website that, it, that gives people uh, useful information. Most of your agents don't have the wherewithal right now to do any of their own marketing. You're going to have to do it for them. And this is something that you either encourage that as a um, as a, uh, as a cultural thing like what Hawaii Life does. You have a Kapala body of work that makes everybody look good like what Boutique Real Estate does. Or you pay for customer service inside salespeople to keep leads um, thinking about their brand 24 hours a day, seven days a week when it comes to, um, when it comes to real estate like what Berkshire Hathaway does. They spend a lot of money on uh, customer service, things that agents cannot do. What can you do to augment a presence of a newish agent? What can you do right now to, um, to keep the lead generation pipeline full? What can you do to, keep, to get buyers and sellers of next year and the year after that on your brand and ready to go when they are ready? Can they go and pay for uh, things like this technology? Um, uh, this is Matterport technology that right now, it's a $5,000 camera and, you, and, and, and agents, most of them cannot afford this stuff. What if you're doing and you're paying for things like this that make clients and agents' lives better? This is a fantastic way to attract your next generation agents and your clients of today and tomorrow. Um, I would encourage a lot of folks to really not pay for enterprise technology anymore. Uh, one of the, uh, and, and I just got off the phone with a, a large brokerage out there that literally said, we're paying so much for, for um, internal technology that no one is using. So what if, what if we became a source of the source? We can actually say that this system works well with our systems, that this CRM works well with our email systems. Um, being a source of the source is great because what this does, it, it combats this whole grass is always greener aspect when it comes to agents who want to leave you. This is a, something that I see so often everywhere I go. So be a expert on the things that your agents don't have time to be experts in. Um, mentorships at that, at that point really kind of come into play. So um, think about how mentorships can help out with things like this. I see mentorships as, a, um, as an exit strategy, really, for, for a lot of managers and for a lot of brokers. Um, have the client database ready to go, and when, um, uh, when you're ready to partner up with an agent who's ready to challenge you in your business, you can, you can really do some pretty cool things 
when it comes to partner partnering and collaborating internally. So have a mentorship uh, program. Uh, that, that was actually another poll question that we have. Um, th there's a lot of mentorship uh, uh, programs coming up, and, and this would be a, a good time to bring up that other poll question, Callie. Absolutely. About mentorship programs within your brokerage. Mm -hmm. In every brokerage that I um, worked with, there was a, a mentorship and accountability program where agents and new agents, establishing new agents, would come together once a week to talk about business building techniques and hold each other accountable to that. Um, and I would credit every single one of those mentorship and accountability programs in, in my success as an agent. And uh, my wife now even does that within her brokerage as well. Uh, top producers talking to want to be top producers about how they're growing each other's businesses um, and it's amazing what they learn from each other. Great. So Nobu, we're about 50% and 50%, so 50% yes and 50% no. Yeah, it, 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 and the thing is, you know, I, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't rule out things like if, you're, if your business does not have a uh, the size to do a mentorship program internally. This is where that YPN program, uh, which is thriving in Arizona, would actually be a benefit. Uh, don't be afraid for these folks to kind of uh, uh, go out there and, and, and be a mentor to each other and, and, and uh, hold each other accountable that way as well. Fantastic thing. And I'm seeing it with CRS and YPN. I'm seeing it with, um, with uh, in my old brokerage, it was uh, uh, the leadership circle and they, they sit down and non-competing agents in markets that are diametrically opposed to each other, they go and they talk to each other on how, uh, how they can grow each other's businesses. So it's, it's, it's a very, very cool thing to think about when it comes to their agents. And it's something that at the, at the association level, Cal, I think about. Mm -hmm. Maybe you uh, maybe you streamline that. Okay. I'm working on it. We have a my broker coach uh, program from NAR. Yeah, it's I I cannot um, I cannot sta understate how much you, agents learn from being in the same room together, or even over coffee, about what's happening in the market right now, and how you can learn. Uh, there's this push to really kind of use Facebook as the as a um, as a relationship builder, but agents, man, we learn so much just from just from five minutes together, and and you never know where business can come from. So, encourage I would encourage that with your agents and get out there yourself and start being a mentor, because if you you become as a as a broker manager, as a broker owner, if you become a thought leader in your own space, that attracts a lot of these uh, these agents that want more. Uh, the questions that I'm seeing online right now are just absolutely crazy. Uh, I, 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 where the broker is, I, I don't know. So, keep going with this. This is where, uh, you know, I, I think if you were to try to do something with these agents, um, playing to their strengths is something they can do, and you're going to have to ask them. Uh, at the orientation, when it comes to your, um, when it comes to your recruiting, ask these people what they did in their previous life. We don't do enough of as an industry in celebrating the previous lives of the agents that we recruit because at the end of the day, this is, a, this is very much a second career for a lot of folks after they realize how much they hate their desk job. So, you know, asking what they did, even if they're a young agent, what did you do in your, la in, in your past life? Um, what expertise can you bring to the table that augments uh, the company brand and that would we in turn can augment in you and, and, and really kind of play to their strength and ask them to do it? Um, they're willing to try anything. You know, they're they're not naive to to uh, have been beaten down by cold calling yet um, and door knocking things like that where it's legal. Uh, you know, and and, and uh, tongue in cheek, narcissism, guys. I mean, I, I, I'm amazed at how well a lot of these these young people because they've had a a a camera and they're uploading 95 million selfies a day. They, they, they're really good on camera, which is an amazing thing. Maybe video and, and, and enhancing your brand with their knowledge base is huge. And, and the big one is rentals. 
I see, uh, and I'm seeing more and more of this as I travel the country, I'm seeing um, these uh, uh, kind of forward-thinking brokerages say, you know what, I need to start building my rental pipeline, which will lead to buy-sell pipeline. Um, I need to build that now with these young agents. Frankly, you know, the younger a person is, the more likely that that person is going to be surrounded by people who can, who want to buy a home, but either can't right now and are renting. And maybe you help these folks uh, at the brokerage level, the enterprise level, streamline that. What if you help them out with that? There are plenty of schools in Arizona that can uh, that can use this kind of help. Uh, case in point, buddy of mine, Roger Seeley, he's got a he's got a high end uh, real estate brokerage and a um, athlete relocation program but he's got a, a lot of young agents surrounded by rentals, renters, and what he does is he facilitates the rental, um, uh, the rental market in the areas around major schools and building up a brand. So he's got uh, rent near SMU.com, rent near uh, University, of Tech, uh, University of Austin, and he's, he's come up with website content that does this, and he pushes his young agents out in front who will attract some of these um, uh, these, these would-be rentals into the pipeline, at some point, especially in Texas where it's affordable, they will buy a home because they're going to graduate from college and they will stay, much like what happens in Arizona. So think about maybe pushing your, these folks out front. Um, uh, uh, Rogers really pushes his, his rental experts out front and says, hey, you become an expert in your marketing um, when it comes to rent, rent around these major college campuses and enhances his brand that way. And he doesn't have to deal with the renters. He's got folks who will do that as well. Plays off the narcissistic aspect of it too. This is Bamboo Realty, and Bamboo Realty is a rental's first brokerage. brokerage. So um, all of their content online is based around rent where you love. The average agent age in Bamboo Realty is over, just, a, just a little over 32, which is, beats the median a, a, a age of the uh, NAR agent. And all these guys do is, is focus on lifestyles and rentals at the corporate level and at the, uh, the MLS level, for example, kind of uh, 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 holistically with, the, with other agents. They are out there doing it, uh, depending on, and what it, what it does is, uh, uh, in a really cool way is these be people become a pipeline for the buyers and the seller agents, traditional residential real estate, um, at the back end when these folks are in the system. These guys literally have a five-year plan for when somebody comes into the system as a renter. They want them uh, resulting as a buyer or a seller on the back end five to ten years out. Do you have a plan for, for things like that? Do you have a long-term business plan, which is something that another poll question that we do have, Cal, if you want to light that guy up. Yep. Are rentals part of your lead curation plan? I look at I look at Arizona and how affordable things are. Uh, renters will be an, it would be an easy play from. Um, from their point of renting a home or a or corporate level home to things like uh, buying and selling later, the metrics are amazing. High end buy, uh, renters tend to be seller uh, buyers first, and these folks are now in the system as buyers and sellers um, through a through their CRM, and, which is Realvolve, and they um, they really kind of uh, 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 become inclusive of these renters um, early on before you even think about buying a home. Okay, so the poll results on this one is 40% said yes, and 60% said no. For those of you guys who have seen the stats that I, um, that I talk about, um, uh, buyers who bought a home last year, they were looking at homes a year out. As the market tightens up, and we're seeing it everywhere, as inventory tightens up, it might take a year and a half, two years now, for people to see a brand and and to think about buying a home and and uh, to be able to actually do it a year plus two years out. So maybe you use these young agents to help them with your lead curation systems. Have these agents kind of grow as renter agents before bid because according to the bamboo guys 
the, the rental transactions are easier, the rentals pay out quicker, and they can get more deals under their belt early, and it's an easy transition for them to become a, to go from a renter agent to a buy sell agent, as they themselves evolve into a, from a renter to a buyer of a home. It's a fascinating um, thing to see when it comes to how, uh, how, how, how to see how brokers are evolving as consumers are evolving as well. Um, these guys are all over Dallas, all over uh, 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 Houston, and in Denver. Check them out. Uh, their principals, Zach Shabbat, uh, all those guys are kind of in manures. They're, they're kind of around all the time. Talk to those guys about what they're seeing in their markets and, and how they grew from uh, 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 how they're growing their rental first business model. So at the end of the day, this is what I, I, I think about this. You know, millennials may not save you. But thinking like one definitely will. Think about giving people information, being a source of the source, being a part of the journey when it comes to uh, what real estate is, and re helping them rethink what real estate is as they evolve as people. This is something that we all have to embrace at some point um, as, as the market tightens up, inventory tightens up. Rethink what, uh, what real estate is. Go beyond sales. Maybe you're not a you're not a sales agent anymore. You're a lifestyle and service oriented industry now. So think about this when it comes to where your next generation brokerage model will go, where your next generation agents will come from, and more importantly, where your next generation clientele will come from as well. Because if you're attracting the the buyer and seller of the future, you're going to be attracting the buyer uh, the agent who will service them as well. With that, uh, is there any questions that I can help out with? Well, as always, um, Nobu is here to take your questions, so go ahead and write them in the question box feature. Um, going back to the poll question number one about, um, you know, are you seeing younger agents coming into the to your brokerage? Um, one uh, of today's attendees, Jeff, mentioned they just onboarded a 19-year-old and a 23-year-old. Um, and their brokerage owners are two 35-year-olds. So, Nobu, can you talk on just a moment about, um, you know, a younger-ish broker? And is there any difference for them um, attracting agents? Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, the thing that I that I see is that, um, especially with the teams, is that is that you, you, they they tend to attract folks that are uh, you know think and, and act just like them. So you know, I look at what a young brokerage looks like, and they will go out and 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 get younger. Even um, I think about a 19-year-old and a 23-year-old, and 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 the question I would ask them first is, you know, have you bought a home? Um, have you uh, what what is your what is your what is your home uh, journey been like? Uh, you know, it's what I, what. Um, what tends to be a difficult thing right now, and, and I'm seeing more and more, uh, uh, more and more and more, is you're seeing these uh, a disconnect um, with perceptions as to it's like, oh, you're a young guy, you might not, you might not know these folks, and you might not know those folks. There's a whole different set of of things you need to prove as a young person, which really sucks because uh, I was there for you know three different brokerages, um, but it's it's proving your worth over and over again and starting to attract uh, folks that don't look like them, which becomes a, uh, 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 which becomes a huge hurdle and one that is actually really fun, right? So um, uh, think about that if you're, if you're a youngish broker, um, don't be, you know, breaking eggs just to make, just to make your omelet. Go out there and, and, and build a sustainable model that will last the next downturn because right now you should be busy. Mm -hmm. If you're not busy, you should have a problem. I don't care how old or young you are, um, but making a sustainable model beyond today should be a goal for any agent. I don't care how old or young they are. So think about that as, as you go. Um, it's kind of what the, the, the bamboo model is. Uh, those guys are all fairly young, but they have some, some, some folks there who can kind of um, uh, help them with the other side of their business that they're not good at. And um, that's a huge thing for them as well. They realize quickly that they needed help with things like, hey, uh, long-term um, uh, long term sustainability and scalability. We need fo to talk to folks who know how to grow a business outside of the market that we're in right now. And those are, those are folks that may not be young, right? So be open-minded, 
place for both sides as well. And probably a great opportunity for the mentorship like you talked about. Yeah, I, and I see a reverse mentorships as well too. I think um, you know if you're if you're a if you're if you're 19 going out there and, and finding somebody who's at the other end of the business who doesn't do anything like you, real estate tends to be very much a self uh, fulfilling prophecy. We try to seek out folks who think like us. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always found myself uh, thriving because I I talked to folks and engaged with with agents who thought the opposite of me. Um, thought about, you know, I, I, I used to know an agent who just didn't have email. And that intrigued me as, a, um, as an agent. Like, how did you do this? And together we realized, hey, he's leaving a lot of business on the table. And I became a pretty good, um, um, a, a pretty good referral base for him for agents or for his clients who wanted a, uh, a more high-tech touch. So, you know, uh, mentorships can go, go both ways. And I would encourage folks to really go out there and talk to folks who challenge them. Excellent. And so, Nobu, on the screen, um, I show, you know, your your handsome picture and your email address. Is email the best way to reach you if people have questions? Yep, sure. Uh, uh, my email address is there. Hit me up. Um, I go around the country now and see a lot of the, these things. And, and frankly, what I'm seeing a lot more now is the fact that these folks are not spending a ton of time um, online, which is, it's, 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 it's crazy when it, when you think about it. Um, they come to me and say, hey, you know, I'm doing this, this uh, new school technique called door knocking, which is hilarious when you think about it. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how at this point a lot of old school people to people uh, relationships actually work, mm -hmm. um, and if it's you know, if it's a, if it's a different face and if it's a, a a different way to do things, it's it's not a not a bad thing in real estate right now. As always, today's webinar has been recorded and will be available on our website, um, and it is a part of one of our tracks for our webinars for Broker University. So once um, every few weeks, about every six weeks, we do a Broker University webinar, and our next one is coming up on June twenty first. And we're going to be talking about using the DISC profiles for real estate team roles. And Regine Christopher is going to be joining us. And there's a few seats left. Um, it has been a very popular topic. Uh, Nobu, what's your opinion about uh, real estate teams these days? What kind of feedback or industry chatter are you hearing? Um, I, I like the, the team aspect. Uh, I... I uh... They need to. They need to be uh, to take care with their business processes. Um, one of the things I'm seeing a lot of with teams right now is, uh, hey, let's have a business process that annoys ten people so that one person will call us back. The churn and burn mentality of a lot of teams to keep the teams sustainable mm -hmm. is something that, um, uh, as a consumer, being a target of one of these uh, these campaigns, um, doesn't work. Uh, I think also a team where it could work is um, exactly what we're talking about here. When you get people who are complement each other, and this is what I love about the DISC profiles, it, you'll you'll realize pretty quickly how how uh, team members can interact and and engage with each other, and then figure out what they, uh, you know, lack of a better term, suck at, and find somebody who is better than them at at, at a particular thing when it comes to business building. Um, that is how these teams are growing like wildfire. Uh, just don't do it too much when it comes to the consumer. Just make sure that you're not annoying them because, man, I, being a target of them as a as a homeowner and two or a, home, a potential home buyer in two different states was not a fun time. So you know, take care. Uh, the disc profile is something that is definitely needed, um, but uh, but you know, definitely uh, build a business that's sustainable uh, the right way. Excellent. Well, Nebu, thank you so much for joining us today. Great. Thanks, guys. Welcome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Don't forget all of our webinars are recorded and available online, and we hope to hear from you soon. Take care.